So what we wanted to know was how many people in Texas are actually infected with this. So what we decided to do was work with the five major blood centers. So what we found is over a five year time point, almost a million people donated blood. And of those, 260 or one for every 3,500 screened positive. So of those that had screened positive, half of them were actually confirmed cases. So that's giving us a rate of about one for every 7,000 people are screening or are being a confirmed positive case in Texas. So what we did, we enrolled people that had screened positive at the local blood bank here in Houston. And of the 150 that have screened positive over time, 30 decided to take part. So we did a one-time assessment and included a questionnaire to try and understand where they might have gotten it. We also got an extra blood sample to verify whether or not these people were positive for so additional <coughs> diagnostics. And then we did an EKG echo, and Dr. Aguilar will talk about that aspect later. So of the 30 that took part, 17 were considered to be a confirmed case. So um, just, just over half of them were false, or just under half of them were false positives. So we didn't include them in the rest of this. But of the 17, we found that there were evidence of locally acquired cases. And as you can see, the red are going to be your locally acquired case. Your blue are going to be people that got it from other countries. So we found 36% had evidence of being locally acquired. We were pretty surprised by that. That was very encouraging, I guess you could say, for more research. And then looking at the parameters as to why, there was some evidence of occupational exposure. Um, hunters were a really interesting find for us. Camping. So this is a, just a case report of one individual person. It was a hunter. So this is a 65-year-old Caucasian male. He um, lives on the outskirts of Houston in a very rural area where he has been a cotton farmer for over 20 years. So um, certainly a very high exposure to the insect. But the interesting thing with him was he reported regularly visiting in deer lease. That's out um, halfway between San Antonio and Houston, so a very shrub, grassy, rural area. And he, when we showed him a picture of the insect, he said, absolutely, I see that all the time. And we said, please, the next time you're in this deer lease, collect some for us, please, please, please. So I get a phone call one morning, and he says, well, you know, the darnest thing, I was at the deer lease last night, and um, wouldn't you believe it, I woke up in the middle of the night, and that sucker was feeding on me. And there were a few more in the bed as well. I said, I hope you don't mind. I didn't know what to put it in. So I put it in a pickle jar. I'm sorry if it smells bad. And I said, no problem. Please bring it in. So Rodian did a great job of testing it. This right here is cutting the bug open. You can see all the blood that came out. So we did blood meal analysis on that. And it was, in fact, human. So we know that he had last been feeding on the guy, as he had said. And then when we tested him, he was also positive. So there's definitely substantial evidence that indicates this guy was infected at the deer lease. In addition, we think that inadequate lodging could also be one. One of our hunters reported that he slept, quote, in my truck bed. So there's definitely um, you know, a chance that these people could be exposed that way just by not protecting themselves from the insects at night. So in conclusion, we found that about a third of Houston area Chagas cases are locally acquired. So again, definitely substantial disease burden and not your traditional um, endemic related case. And there are high risk populations for transmission that are unique to the United States or the Houston area that's going to be your hunting, fishing, occupations.